remember that sometimes even with the presence of strictures you wouldn't see peristenotic dilatation and that's when the small bowel is being decompressed by some other way uh, and by some other way i mean by the presence of fistulae or sinuses so for instance if this segment is uh, structured and then there is uh, some decompression going on by this loop fistulizing with another small bowel loop then the proximal small bowel wouldn't have enough pressure on it to cause pre-stenotic dilatation. We can also compare the um, T2 signals between the pre and post fat suppressed images and see what are the contents of the structure. This image is fat suppressed and this is without fat suppression. Now you can see the abnormal bowel wall thickening and uh, can you see the difference between the two? Let's look at this area. There is some intermediate to bright signal in the center and then low signal more towards the inner and the most outer layer of the small bowel wall and this area the central part has shown drop of signal so that was because of fat but then this area which has become even more bright with fat suppression that's edema similarly you can see some fat signal and then you can see edema on top of that on this segment as well you can see an ulcer here so like I said, when you see fibrotic segments, uh, do tell whether there are signs of active inflammation or not. So in this case, there are definitely signs of active inflammation.